Some of us know it as Eight Mile Wall, Burwood Wall, or the Whaling Wall. But some of us don't know it at all, unaware that it was built to keep black and white communities separated. A major artifact of segregation right in our backyard. In tonight's Two Americas, 7 Action News reporter Amira David introduces us to the Bright Wall that has a dark history. Between Burwood and Mendota, beneath the rooftops and behind the trees is a wall with a story. Doesn't mean much to the average passerby. I'm glad I lived this long to see it. Still standing tall. But to the people born and raised in this eight mile and Wyoming community, this is Burwood Wall, a piece of segregation still standing. The wall was constructed back in 1941 by a real estate developer. Six feet high and about a half a mile long, it had one purpose, to separate black and white communities. The story goes that 80 years ago, a developer set out on a mission to construct an all white housing development. The problem was that this area that we're standing on was um, denoted as red on the city survey maps that were created during the 1930s. Red signified uh, hazardous, dangerous, as an investment. Because of how close it was to an adjacent black neighborhood, the Federal Housing Administration was reluctant to ensure bank loans for the new homes, so the developer pitched an idea, build a wall of separation. It's just a remarkable, remarkable um, artifact of segregation. Gerald Van Dusen, the author behind the book, Bringing the Wall's Dark History to Light. Are a lot of people surprised to hear about this, to learn that something like this exists in a city like Detroit? To my knowledge, this is the only segregation artifact in the North. Fred White is 91, but remembers watching the cement trucks as a nine-year-old boy. What did you know about the other side? Did you know there were some rules? That was called the white sub. We had no business down that way unless we was going to the store. Hop the wall in the 1940s and you'd face the wrath of police. You'd be harassed and um, you heard a lot of the N-word. But by the time Teresa Moon moved to the neighborhood in 1959, white flight was taking root, black families were moving in, and the wall's purpose had begun to wane. The Mendota kids lived over there, and the Mendota kids would hop the wall and come to the park. Today, you'll see sections of the wall transformed with images of justice and equality. The mural helps it to kind of take away from the connotation of it being a segregation wall. But painting over the wall hasn't quite erased the painful past, nor the reality that a physical barrier isn't needed to know segregation, though not enforced by law, does still exist. A recent study shows the Detroit metro area is considered one of the most segregated in the country. And it's important that we acknowledge that it existed in the past, but it continues. Do you think you'll see a different Detroit in your lifetime? I'm hoping that that happens, you know, because I don't intend on going anywhere. I love Detroit. I love my community. I don't intend on leaving, so I hope it changes. I'm Amira David, 7 Action News. Thank you, Amira. We're told Burwood Wall will remain standing. Last year, it was added to the National Register of Historic Places, and the preservation of the wall will be commemorated by those still living in the community this summer.